okay so today uh, we will uh, go to a very different topic uh, and we'll start with another uh, modality uh, of sensing in particular uh, touch sensing right so there had been uh, many such uh, modalities right and uh, we are all aware of uh, how uh, the sight right uh, is sort of uh, used uh, on, from the perspective of a, a computer system or an iot using all this entire uh, pillar of camera and computer vision right so you have this uh, field very well developed and we do know about all the microphone business where we have this acoustics right the acoustic uh, signal processing right this is how you deal with uh, sound and uh, this is like so matured now right uh, all these systems like uh, alexa and uh, google nest and all you have automatic voice recognition and uh, automatic transcription and so on right uh, still getting matured but yeah, the computer vision part and the acoustic these are the two modalities which are pretty much uh, like very very close to uh, like perfections right uh, they are still being perfected there are lots of uh, loopholes in uh, different contexts uh, but still this is in a pretty mature stage right whereas in case of these two senses i am myself not sure what is going on right there are some sensors i have heard to detect the some kind of a what is the strength of a gas mail kind of thing uh, right how pungent the smell is those kind of sensors are there uh, but it's not that mainstream or uh, it's very specific to different sorts of industries right it's uh, not a very general purpose uh, sensor right and uh, this the other modality right uh, which is uh, upcoming in a lot of uh, human computer interfaces right is uh, touch right when you uh, when a human being interacts uh, with the computer, uh, whether we can interact using touch, right? And uh, one of the uh, figures, right, that uh, inspires me a lot when we talk about uh, touch is the Michelangelo's very famous diagram, like a uh, picture uh, that he uh, drew called the creation of Adam, where uh, we are interpreting the divine touch, right? Uh, the human being is being touched by uh, the gods, and we are sort of in the junction, right, uh, where there is an input touch right uh, from the divine side and which sort of awakens up our uh, human race in the very similar way right this is somewhat we are trying to exchange the roles where uh, we try to give an input touch to the uh, system right and uh, in our place all the cyber organisms have come right all the microcontroller based systems in intelligent systems iot systems have come which are sort of responsible for perceiving the touch right so now the touch comes from the human beings and uh, that the same way we perceive touch right uh, that has to be perceived by computer systems okay so now uh, on one hand uh, we have the humans uh, which are trying to interact uh, with the cyber systems and on the other side we have computers right earlier uh, instead of touch when we spoke about vision algorithms uh, we just had the camera right and whatever the camera was feeding from the scene uh, that was being interpreted by the computer using computer vision algorithms right now we have to develop algorithms in order to perceive touch how it was touched how what was uh, like any gestures that was made right uh, so all these things we can perceive right if somebody uh, touches our hand right uh, and we can we can try to not only the fact that we can understand that uh, our hand is touched but also how hard it is touched right whether somebody is making a handshake or somebody is just uh, like calling you uh, touching their finger and so on so all these detailed things we can understand so this is very similar uh, if uh, computers can understand that right or whether we can develop uh, hardware modalities uh, that could be used for uh, implementing such systems okay and uh, we this is one example of human computer interface right uh, there are others but uh, touch and uh, touch based gestures is one uh, pretty predominant form of uh, HCI. Okay, and now uh, uh, the system basically, uh, in an abstract sense, looks like this, right? We will have uh, touch as an input modality. Uh, so, as I told you, uh, this is not always binary, right? So, 
this is one case that whether you are touching or not right but uh, it is not limited uh, to the on and off right uh, right this is this is one case okay so this is like whether you touch a button or don't touch a button as simple as that whereas you might have uh, even gestures right where, which is basically a pattern or uh, with a continuous touch right uh, that could be also an input modality right so just think about uh, the password that you give to your uh, screen lock right we have the swipe password kind of thing where you draw a pattern on the screen right and uh, it's not just limited to screen but uh, any any sort of device that could be used for an uh, for as an hci interface right the human computer interface uh, it can it should be capable of uh, incorporating such inputs okay and then we have the sensing mechanism which is going to implement all the algorithms uh, that goes underneath in order to interpret such touches and there will be a perception and recognition mechanism in the iot device that is similar for uh, all sorts of uh, input modalities be it vision be it uh, acoustics be it touch and so on so it is going to run uh, its uh, recognition algorithms in order to interpret uh, what happened uh, as the from the input side right and based on that uh, you can have hundreds of examples right what the actuation it is going to do and I'm going to show you uh, some of the actuation, right, as, as a few examples. So these are pretty common uh, where touch is used as an input modality. The left one is uh, all of you, almost all of you have this kind of an equivalent induction uh, cooked up oven, right, uh, where uh, you can, this is a touch panel and these are touch buttons and we are all concerned with uh, whether the touch is made or not. It's more of a uh, switch, right? It's uh, takes a binary input okay uh, whereas in case of a writing tablet uh, there is a little bit more uh, variation to it it's not just uh, touch or no touch so let's say this is uh, this consists of all uh, let's say very minuscule uh, pixels right uh, based on which position of the screen we are talking about or which position of the tablet we are talking about right and if not we are tracking not only on and off but on and off in a given cell, right? Which is also tracking the location of the pen, right? Or the stylus, right? That is exactly the same kind of device that I am using now while teaching, right? So uh, it basically tracks uh, which location. And other thing it can track is uh, let's say pressure, right? How much pressure you are also putting uh, at a given point, right? So as you, if you look at the specifications of uh, such tablets, uh, they will tell you they can classify so many uh, levels of pressures, right? Whether uh, you are putting a very hard pressure or a low, uh, less pressure, right? And this will be used for doing some, let's say artistic sketches, right? Uh, people who are use this, using this for drawing, uh, right? So they are really concerned about, uh, let's say you are trying to use a pencil and how hard you press on the tablet matters, right? So they can also sense how much pressure was put on a given point apart from the location. And then all pervasive touch screen, right? Uh, all of you have used it and uh, you already know how pervasive is this. And many of the uh, equipments or many of the IoT devices that has a display, right? Sometimes we'll have a, a display that has touch screen uh, capabilities because that will reduce the requirement of having uh, things like an extra keyboard or like a set of buttons, right? So sometimes they will give you uh, interactivity on the screen itself so both for a display as well as for uh, interactivity or display uh, or for giving giving a certain set of inputs right and from there uh, these are the things that are pretty common and uh, there's a lot of research that happens right in this area uh, where we try to design uh, intelligent interfaces and on on those uh, surfaces right let's say that on just a tabletop uh, we try to make certain gestures and the table top is made uh, intelligent such that any gestures made on top of the table sort of translates uh, to some kind of commands to control something right so that is the actuation part i'm talking about and on the right hand side i have given an example of a smart home uh, system right? in this example it's a stereo right uh, playing music uh, so just with gestures you would be able to 
play or pause, stop, increase or decrease volumes, change tracks, and so on. Uh, but this is one example. There is a lot of uh, the smart home automation uh, that are being envisioned uh, that could be done using such gestures, right? And this has a very special uh, role in case of uh, old people, right? Uh, or just to improve the accessibility. So uh, many people are not able to, let's say, move uh, very easily, right? And they want to control certain things, right? So it's always better and more intuitive, right? If you, for every such operation, you don't want to get your smartphone, open some app and do something, right? It, it can be made ad, as intuitive as possible um, by doing this uh, gestures or by doing such uh, such touch inputs, right, to ev everyday objects. Okay, so and those everyday objects could be made smarter such that they can interpret uh, this kind of gestures made on them. Okay, and one more uh, practical example I am going to give you. Right, this is more uh, from the industry side. Right, so this is something that. Uh, I was looking at when I was at the industry towards the end of my tenure there. So this is for tracking uh, user interest in physical retail stores, right? So what happens is uh, when people go and uh, buy such products, right? Uh, so what what you do is that you go and pick up certain item, right? So let's say you are going to buy some shampoo or uh, soap as uh, I have put in this picture. And uh, let's say you have picked up something and you are probably not looking for this item, right? So you are not very happy with this, but this happened to attract your attention because it's just in front. Uh, uh, once you enter the store, this is something that uh, caught your attention and you looked at it, right? But you did not like it. Uh, and maybe next you uh, roamed around and uh, picked up something else, right? Which is something that uh, you probably uh, also didn't like, right? Uh, you are trying to see that whether something uh, else is available, right? This is not the exact thing that you were probably looking for, right? And then uh, you could get the thing that you are actually looking for, and then you go to the cash section and do the billing, right? So uh, most of the information, right? Uh, that uh, what is the what is the precedence that you have put for three uh, will be lost once you do the billing, right? What happens after the billing is done? The only information that uh, these guys will retain is this, right? Uh, somebody came to the shop and bought three. So this item number three is very popular and so on, right? So what the information that the store guys are missing or the vendors are missing is that three was preferred probably over one, one and two, and two was probably preferred uh, than one, right? So that is something uh, known as the physical uh, like analytics, right? Uh, if you try to buy some product from Amazon or Flipkart, right? So in that case, what happens is they could track how you are browsing, right? You are you are basically changing your preferences over time, and finally they could really track uh, what what the, what is the thing that you bought, right? Whereas in case of uh, physical retail stores or we say brick and mortar stores, right? So uh, it's very difficult uh, really to understand what were the things that. You probably would have bought, but did not buy it either because of price or maybe something else uh, was more preferable to you, right? So this information is extremely important, right? And it's as I will tell you, it's basically worth billions of dollars, right? This just this uh, market, right? And this influences a lot of other things: uh, how you place the items uh, in the stores, uh, what 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 things are uh, going to be advertised more, and so on. So in order to implement such a system, right, uh, wh what do you think is a kind of uh, the right modality, right? Uh, let's forget about the touch, right? Uh, uh, if you know about Amazon Go, but they have a very similar system like this, right, where uh, they will bill automatically. Right? Based, you don't even have to go to the cash section. Uh, whatever things you pick up, uh, you will be billed, right? Any, any idea what kind of uh, modality could be used here? It's actually being used in some stores, but the there are problems. Facial recognition. Facial recognition. Uh, but facial recognition is going to recognize somebody's face, yeah. right? Uh, whether he's uh, for the bill X payment. Or uh, Sorry. For the bill payment, they recognize the face, and from their account, they take the money. No, 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 no. true. But how do you figure out that what are the items that you have bought? Sir, uh, in most, like I saw in one of those stores, 
uh, they have some bar they have some specific codes on the products themselves and they have a lot of cameras on the roof no so, no in the trolley they have the camera sir while they put it in the trolley they, it takes a bar oh, there is no hard and fast rule right uh, i mean i have not seen uh, cameras in the trolley but on the roof sir, i not in the that. trolley they are i think yeah. they are on the roof or something yeah. like that and whenever a user picks up an article it's just uh, like it gets billed to his account and when he exits the store the amount is automatically deducted from the amazon account right 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 so this is uh, one approach that amazon uh, uses and uh, it's not instant uh, if you have i i try we try to use all this amazon go in the very very initial days just to look at the performance and in the very initial days it it probably took more than 20 30 minutes to just create the bill after you leave the shop right because of the intense amount of uh, computation they would do right these uh, these are basically trying to see that uh, what are the different items that you have picked up right and and uh, they they try to uh, uh one is the face right who has like who is the person there and who has bought this thing but the the problem here is more of association of the items that you have bought with that face right uh, because facial recognition is always there right even if you try to board an airplane uh, in certain countries there uh, they will do the verification just from uh, doing the facial recognition but in this case uh, you want to also associate the items that you have bought so uh and more importantly uh it's not just for billing right because billing will be an easy problem uh like far more easier compared to what you are trying to do so what what they are interested in actually there are like startups in india and uh, which who are very uh, seriously working on such problems uh but using uh, computer vision right so one of the proposition is basically trying to do uh, eye gaze tracking right there will be self cameras and or placed on the roof uh, right on the, on the ceiling and they are going to track uh, all the sorts of uh, gazes that people are making towards certain products right and there is a lot of uh, computation and uh, complex uh, computer vision algorithms involved right which makes it extremely expensive restrictive and uh, then privacy intrusive right so particularly in the us uh, it's kind of a law uh, that you cannot put camera everywhere particularly uh, in places like california where uh, there are strict laws also in european countries where you cannot just simply take uh, photos of people right so uh, privacy intrusion is one of the big problems that will that might kill uh, this kind of a proposition although uh, there are applications that are being built uh, using such uh, hardware in mind right we, installing some camera on the shelf and then trying to look at all the people who are gazing uh, gazing their gaze right in what what direction they are looking at so from there you can figure out uh, what items they are looking at right and what you basically get is like a heat map uh, like this if you even use the computer gaze or sorry the human gaze so one of the propositions is uh, tracking items uh, by tracking the touch right so once uh, we have some kind of an uh, touch interpretability integrated with such shelves uh, if you pick up a pack of uh, let's say biscuit right we can we can interpret very easily whatever you have picked up and from which location of the shelf you have picked up so this is a direct mapping right and uh, and this will be also used not only for gauging consumer interest but other things like uh, detecting out of stock items right uh, if a certain item uh is sold more uh, or uh, you can also figure out things which are more popular right so those are the things that uh, can be done and other important application is they are trying to use this for optimizing item placements so even in the online stores it as you know there is a there is a huge problem about uh, or a very important problem about how do you organize or advertise this different uh Art, uh, items right uh, in the web page how they are ordered and how they are sponsored at and so on so in a physical store also uh, it's an important problem uh, based on their uh, popularity and so on okay yeah. so we can use uh, touch technology which will be cheaper and more ubiquitous right uh, ubiquitous and uh, it is also uh, lightweight than using computer vision algorithms and putting uh, this uh, heavy weight uh, cameras right and it will be much uh, free of privacy issues 
and uh, if you don't know there is like a huge uh, huge market for this right and uh, if somebody who has interest towards the research side could actually look at uh, such applications right and uh, how to integrate uh, touch sensing in this kind of applications okay so now uh, we'll try to go into the nitty gritty details of the technology right how this thing works this was enough of a motivation right what are the different applications and how you see touch sensing around you right uh, there are primarily two uh, technologies that we are going to look at the first one is based on resistors so how are you going to uh, implement or do touch sensing using resistive technology or like a bunch of resistors and the other one is capacitors right uh, capacitive technology Right. And on for the first one, uh, we are going to see how a resistive touch screen works. So uh, pretty much most of the touch screens that you see could be either capacitive or uh, resistive. So we are going into the resistive uh, sensing technology for looking at uh, this variety of touch screens. And we are also going to look at uh, capacitive sensing and going to explore uh, other uh, HCI applications that I have told you just now, right? Uh, looking at gestures or looking at uh, touching everyday object right making everyday objects more intelligent uh, right and some of the projects that i have uh, mentioned right uh, there are uh, there is a hint for all these different kind of applications we can build around uh, capacitive touch okay so first we'll uh, today we'll start with uh, resistive uh, technology called resistive touch screens in this case uh, because we are going to look at touch screens and how they work so first we are going to have a pretty good idea about the internal mechanics right what is the fundamental concept behind these touch screens and what is the sensing technology that goes inside it okay so at the nutshell uh, what we have here is pretty basic right uh, so some of you might have started uh, forgetting the basic electronics but in this series of classes right one or two classes you have to bear uh, some of the basic electronics uh, right and you have to uh, revise them if you happen to forget but this is pretty basic i would uh, i would uh, assure you we won't go to anything uh, higher than karchoff's law right uh, something which has been taught to you in the high school or in the first year of your btec okay so uh, we are going to start with something which is called a voltage divider circuit what does it do if you have a source voltage uh, let's say vs as shown here uh, right let me change the color okay so uh, the voltage divider circuits lies uh, at the heart of the resistive touch screen that i have uh, told you so we have the source voltage vs which is going to be split up uh, by these two uh, resistors right of values r1 and r2 okay and you all know how to analyze this circuit Right. What we are interested in is basically figuring out the voltage at different points of the circuit, right? And uh, you already know that uh, what will be the values of the currents and uh, the values of the voltages here. So just to give you a, a hint, right? There is really nothing uh, complicated here. So let's say U mid is the potential at this particular point, right? All you have to do is what is the value of the current let's say that is flowing through the circuit right so vs is your uh, voltage here which is uh, and minus u mid this gives you the potential across the first resistor divided by r1 which is basically the current right and this becomes equal to u mid divided by r2 right which is the uh, current that is flowing through r2 right this is i have marked it as ir2 so this should be equal right and that is exactly what uh, i have written so this is just expanded so vs r2 uh, this r2 comes on the other side so vs r2 minus u mid r2 is equal to u mid r1 uh, all high school stuff again uh, and then u mid is equal to r2 divided by r1 plus r2 into vs is equal to 1 plus r1 by r2 into vs okay so this is uh, known as a voltage divider circuit because there is a particular reason we can change the value 
of u mid if you see that we are interested in this particular value of u mid okay and this u mid has some control knobs right uh, even for this very simple circuit u mid is dependent on the ratio of r1 and r2 okay and that is the reason uh, it is called uh, voltage divider right is basically dividing the voltage uh, into two, two portions right uh, and that is modulated by what is the uh, ratio that you are choosing okay so it's completely up to you how you want to partition the value of voltage and uh, the pa the power of this very simple circuit is to uh, allow you to choose uh, in any such partition so now uh, we are going into trying to understand the architecture of a one dimensional touch screen okay so uh, how does it look like so there are two layers okay uh, on the top uh, there is this uh, top layer which is marked as a, by this red color and uh, there is a bottom layer uh, which is the black in color which is uh, non flexible and the top layer is flexible okay and this is where uh, you can touch right that is that is our uh, job is to figure out where you are touching uh, the screen in this one dimensional touch screen okay it's not yet two dimensional we are going to look at the theory first and then we are going to expand it to a two dimensional case okay so both the layers are conductive so they can conduct electricity and uh, so the current can flow through them so whenever we are touching a particular portion on on the top uh, it is going to bend and touch the uh, bottom part right on the, the bottom layer uh, which is non flexible though but uh, this is something that is not going to flex only the red part is going to flex and touch at a particular point so if you want to figure out uh, the position of your touch we are interested in the uh, the length of the this l touch right so what we want to do as a part of this particular exercise is estimate the ratio l touch is to l right what is the proportion of uh, the length that, uh, that that is the offset for your hand right so if this is the zeroth position and this is let's say we denote this by l we are more interested in knowing the proportion of this distance right to the entire uh, distance so if this is denoted by l touch what is l touch divided by l okay any any questions still here okay so this is we are slowly going to build up the concept of uh, 2d touch screen we are just starting with the 1d version okay so if, if you have any question please feel free to stop and ask me okay so uh, this is the basic uh, uh, theory uh, that we already know that the resistance is uh, proportional to the length of the uh, wire or the length of the um, uh, the conductor and inversely proportional to the area right the cross sectional area okay so this is something that we will need uh, that the more the length right uh, higher will be the value of the resistance so this is something again uh, you should uh, know from your basic physics that uh, resistance is proportional to length and this is sort of the backbone of uh, a resistive touch screen right one of the principal applications uh, of uh, that is that is highlighted uh, in a resistive touch screen okay so more uh, analytically what we can uh, show here is uh, r2 is the value of the resistance of the first part wherever you have uh, fr from the starting point to the place you have touched it right so that resistance could be represented as rho uh, l touch divided by a whereas the on the other other side right after the touch point we can uh, denote it as r1 is equal to rho l rest l rest is nothing but l minus l touch uh, divided by a and rho because it is the same material right so this is the same uh, conducting plate uh, that is uh, on top and uh, on the bottom side that is another plate but the row is same for the same plate okay so we are trying to uh, create the same uh, voltage divider circuit model uh, and trying to incorporate that kind of an idea here right so uh, we already know that uh, u mid right this u mid thing was r2 divided by r1 plus r2 into vs 
correct uh, when we try to understand the voltage divider circuit now uh, what we are interested in here is about the touch point okay so uh, what is the voltage there so what we can write is uh, just replace the values of r2 r1 and r2 we simply uh, do like rho l touched by a and uh, r1 is replaced by rho into l rest by a and just just uh, put the values and it will get cancelled with each other and what uh, remains is uh, l touch divided by l into vs okay so uh, you made or basically the volt potential at the touch point uh, is uh, just dependent on uh, the offset right how much uh, what was the distance from your location of the start to what is the location that you have pressed your finger so this is this divided by the entire length is that is that is how the voltage is divided so what is the observation right what is special this so this analysis was not very complicated right by the way right but what is the take away point uh, from here that could be used in engineering a touch screen right uh, that are this right one is it is independent of the material properties of the strips right which makes it convenient for manufacturing and calibration purposes so you have to use this uh, material in order to build the touch screen right on top you have a material this red material and on the bottom you have this black material right so they have to uh, the the only job is not to detect your touch but also that uh, that is the same surface which will be used for your display right what whatever comes in your screen you have to look at it right so uh, you can put more preference to materials that has better display properties right because as you are seeing it doesn't depend on rho right rho could be it could be any material and the suggestion is that you are going to choose such materials that has better display properties right and uh, you mid as you are understanding here is independent of the material properties of the strips okay so that is the first point okay so we back come back to the voltage divider circuit and uh, one important thing is we try to note here is let's say we want to make r2 as a constant uh, uh, like proportional to r1 right where k is some proportionality constant so what happens in this case uh, this now we'll have one more uh, benefit right the benefit is that uh, r2 by r1 by r2 is just going to be uh, a proportion of uh, it's, it's a function of k it really doesn't depend on what is the what are the exact values of r1 and r2 okay so uh, just keep this one in mind that we have introduced the voltage divider circuit what what is the value of the u mid that you have sort of understood now and you have also understood that uh, this value does not depend on the material properties of the conductor here right so whatever be the uh, whatever be the whatever be the conductor right in case of the touch screen also that we were trying to show the one dimensional model whatever be the uh, resistor uh, uh, specific resistances of those particular conductors it will still be the same value and it just depends on the offset of the touch okay so now uh, we are just trying to let's say extend uh, the circuit okay so how we are trying to extend the circuit the one thing that we have already done is we are taking a ratio instead of using r1 and a separate value of r2 we are just using r1 and k r1 okay so this is a constant multiplied by r1 so this is how the ratio looks like now okay and in the same way r2 and this is k into r2 okay so now we have this two uh, points right so let's say there is now instead of a single u mid you have u2 and u3 okay so if we try to look at uh, what are the values of uh, u2 and u3 we can we can write uh, uh, this simple equation and just place uh, the values that we have just now computed right so it will be k into r1 divided by r1 plus k into r1 which is uh, some value like this right and for u3 it will be some value like this so the point to note here is that in both the cases uh, u2 as well as u3 
uh, it does not depend again on uh, the specific values r1 and r2 as long as this uh, these two things right the in in one ladder right or in one particular chain uh, if we have these two values in the same ratio right for a certain uh, for let's say for a certain height right uh, or a certain level uh, then all of the points u2 u3 if you have even u4 u5 and so on uh, that will be at the same potential okay so which means that uh, uh, like i am basically trying to repeat the same thing the potentials u2 and u3 are independent of the magnitudes of r1 and r2 so this is another point and uh, that should go into your head okay so this holds as long as k is constant of course k is constant and we are uh, all assuming that uh, this is let's say uh, made of the same material so if we are uh, limiting ourselves to a certain length right uh, let's say this is a certain length l1 and this is same for all of them let's say uh, l1 and l sorry l1 and this is a total length l right so all of them will have the same potential okay and this is independent of the material this is independent of the uh, resistance values even okay so what does it signify so what is the direct uh, implication of this particular phenomenon the direct implication is that if we connect uh, these two points right if we connect this u2 and uh, this point u3 uh, even using a resistance right there is no current that is going to flow right uh, just that because they are at all the same potential uh, no current will be flowing through r3 okay so if you are uh, finding this analysis very very hard right uh, i request you to look at very basic electronic right the time you have analyzed uh, electrical circuits in your first year or in your high school right this is just like application of karchop's law right uh, in a loop you have to write the values of the current and then solve those equations to figure out uh, the value of current through let's say r3 and i request you to do this small exercise right i am not going to go any further uh, in the analysis part of the uh, resistive capacitors right all we are going to have now is an extrapolation of this particular idea right but i request you to do the basic circuit analysis part uh, to figure out that yeah r3 is indeed uh, zero okay just don't take the just the formulation that i have showed you right we are we were making some assumptions and all so but i i try to uh, kind of request you to do this analysis independently okay so if given this circuit like this uh, in our uh, touch screen so this is a model of the circuit that we are trying to build as an analog of our, of our touch screen so what we are trying to derive is that what is the offset from a starting pointer so let's say this is some kind of a starting place let's say some zero because again we are going to give some physical structure to this particular circuit right and as you will see slowly that depending on this offset uh, the value of this u changes okay so uh, how much is the value of uh, r1 is to how much is the value of this k r1 so you'll have this resistance kind of splitted based on the length right so it this k could be very very large uh, right which means that you are probably that l is very small so at this particular point could be there is a very small resistance and in this part there is a very very uh, large resistance that is present but the potential that you are going to have here is going to be the same across right if you have multiple such ladders uh, it will be the same okay and even if you connect all of them to a certain resistance there is no current that is going to flow uh, in the horizontal direction in this case okay so we just extend this particular concept uh, for the 2d touch screen which is basically an amalgamation of the 1d horizontal case and a 1d vertical case right so 1d horizontal is just a flipped version of the 1d vertical which i will just rotate the circuit by 90 degree and do the analysis okay that is going to give us a uh, 2d touch screen so how uh, will this entire physical structure look like so on top you will have the let's say the the red plate right uh, which is going to be uh, touched upon right so the person who is actually wants to find out the location of his or her finger uh, will be pressing at a certain point and this is going to push against the 
black plate okay so that's what i have written here when the finger touches the screen the top red plate is pushed into contact to the bottom uh, black uh, black plate at the touch point okay so wherever it is touched that i am also going to show there will be a sudden deflection right i have already told you that uh, this has this property of uh, bending right so this will be a little bent the red the red colored plate and at that particular it will be bent and it will be touched or kind of shorted uh, with the, the same point uh, of the black plate which is underneath the red plate so the red one is at top so this is the top one and this is the bottom one and within that within them there will be one more uh, uh, layer which is basically the screen we call the screen with the high row material okay so what we are interested in doing now is uh, finding out the location of your finger from both the coordinate space right there is one d touch screen in the red domain so this is basically figuring out this particular length right what is the l uh, vertical or l red we can call it and what is the value of uh, l black right? what is the value of l black okay so this black is basically the horizontal thing right what is the coordinate of your uh, horizontal in the horizontal direction what was your touch point and in the vertical direction what is your touch point so this could be the vertical zero and this could be the horizontal zero okay so we now want to abstract uh, this particular physical structure and map it to a circuit okay so the same voltage divider circuit okay so now if you are uh, looking at this particular uh, uh, picture right so here what is the same thing we are doing that we have just now explained uh, so imagine that there is the series of uh, vertically uh, joint resistances right so we have this r rest and r touch we have this r rest and r touch and so on right it, it can continue in both the directions right and what we are doing uh, is that we are touching a certain uh, portion of the uh, 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 with a certain a certain proportion of this one dimensional touch screen let's say we are touching here okay so this will again have a uh, something like this right so there will be a certain portion which is basically your uh, r uh, rest right so this example here is flipped because i am using this on as zero so and this could be the r touch okay so and what is happening here is that this is going to go and touch with the horizontal resistances right because the, no, please note that this particular uh, plate right is going to bend and going to touch with the bottom plate uh, where the black plate right where there are this horizontal resistances and here there could be a certain resistance uh, like r h1 and then there will be something called r h2 and so on okay so again the problem uh, basically or the physical structure of the circuit that i have tried to map with the circuit model also uh, now should be clear to you and this basically becomes the same uh, extended voltage divider circuit right in the basic voltage divider circuit we did not have uh, so many ladders we just have only one uh, uh, where or only one path uh, for the current to go through only uh, let's say only this part but now we have also seen in the extended voltage divider circuit doesn't matter even if you have all these things but they are splitted in the same ratio right what is important is that r rest is to r touch they have to have the same ratio so if they happen to have the same ratio uh, that is not going to interfere with your uh, measurement so any any current that is going to go through will be zero basically there is no uh, current that is going to flow through the horizontal uh, resistances Okay, so this is our basic uh, circuit model uh, for the one-dimensional touch screen. Okay, so what we will do is that when we apply the potential, right? Uh, uh, that is, you have this series of wires here, right? Series of wires ending up here, right? And we are applying the potential. So uh, all of this will be, let's say, from zero volts, right, to uh, 5 volts and there will be a voltage gradient right that will be 
created here so this will be a very high uh, value of voltage and the voltage will initially and eventually die to zero right and this will be uh, exactly proportional to the length okay so the more the distance you travel uh, higher will be the uh, or lower will be the potential at the particular point right and that is exactly abstracted out in this picture so if your touch point is here you will get a certain ratio if your touch point is here you are going to get a certain ratio and so on okay so all you care about is to find out the voltage at this particular location if you know the voltage at this particular location then you know what is the distance of your finger or the what is the distance of the touch point from a certain end right that that calibration you have to do right what is zero and so on and what is the what is the highest voltage what is the lowest voltage but it does not depend on uh, the material as you have understood it purely depends on the geometry okay so it only only depends on this distance right let's, let's say small l and this is capital l so let's say capital l uh, is responsible for a fluctuation of 0 to 5 volts right so if you travel all the way from 0 to l uh, your 5 volts will be diminished to 0 volts and what happens if you travel to a, of a distance of small l okay so from the circuit uh, we are now uh, kind of uh, in a position uh, to uh, tell the answer right at least we know that the value of the voltage that you measure it can be directly mapped to a position on the one dimensional touch screen okay so <clears throat> uh, this is the same thing uh, but uh, for your uh, reading uh, i just put it right so uh, uh, this is the, as i told you this is a repetition of the same uh, voltage divider circuit and uh, r rest and r touch are for the same segment right so this is one 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 segment right and it's the r rest and r touch are for every segment and we all know that uh, this will be all uh, the values will be at the same of these points of the nodes right this will be at the same potential okay so the the horizontal current is not going to flow okay so this is basically you can replace this by open circuit right there is you can just assume that there is nothing there okay so the analysis becomes much more simpler okay so <clears throat> uh, now if we just simply open uh, the circuits because we have already analyzed that uh, there will be no current that will be flowing through this uh, even if you join them right so u3 or u4 or whatever right uh, will be just the ratio of the touch okay so now if you are given uh, a certain material that has this property right uh, all material will uh, that is a conductor will have this property that uh, your more the length uh, that you cover uh, from the start uh, your resistance is going to go on increasing linearly and in that way the voltage drop will also keep on increasing linearly and that is the fundamental theory behind figuring out the location of your uh, finger in the touch screen right is there is no uh, very high fi theory behind it right this is this is all that we need right and that that engineering has to be done properly okay and same is the case of the one dimensional horizontal case right in in case of horizontal uh, thing right this will still be there right uh, the uh, the the screen on top right the the red plate will still be there but when you are touching or pressing at a certain point right instead of applying the potential on the red plate now the potential difference is uh, applied in the black plate right note this is different now earlier we were trying to put the potential across the red plate right from top to bottom now the potential is applied in the black plate okay so this is again going to behave in the same way and it is going to give you this offset okay what is uh, the l touch here okay compared to the entire length l okay and very similarly uh, even if the red plate is going to touch this particular uh, in this in this case the black plate it's not going to uh, interfere with all the currents and so on because uh, the current uh, this r uh, vertical right this r v1 or the r v2 these are all going to be zero by the same analysis okay these are all 
it can all be replaced by uh, open circuits okay so now uh, we have these two uh, coordinates uh, both the l touch vertical and the l top uh, l touch horizontal okay so this is a toy example that i have uh, created uh, using this tinker cad tool uh, this is something that also you can create so if you see uh, there are uh, two stages uh, right if you create a very very simple uh, try to create a very very simple touch screen like this that has only a few uh, pixels or only a few points that you can actually register but this will clear your concept right you can actually go to this tinkercad website and create this very simple tool so what we do is uh, look at this two things differently right there is a, a red uh, circuit which is the vertical right top to bottom this is the vertical one and there is this green uh, circuit which is the horizontal one or we can call it the x axis right this is this is for the x direction and this is for the y direction okay and uh, now if you notice that the the red plates right they are kind of uh, like independent right they are sort of floating uh, on top of the uh, the green plate right and this entire green plate uh, right i have just uh, abstracted out uh, the entire system with this resistance right actually it's a continuous uh, sort of a material and uh, we could not do something like this in this particular uh, simulation we have instead of that we have just discretized the entire problem and that put small small resistances right so in this case i have put four resistances so starting from here there is some voltage drop here some voltage drop here some voltage drop here and some voltage drop here and eventually it goes to ground so uh, i hope the connections are clear and this is just a voltmeter for uh, measurement right this is not required this is for measurement just to see uh, what is the voltage where right and let's say i am putting a, a 5 volt supply and this is the ground okay so similarly uh, for doing the vertical axis uh, we basically connect the uh, other plate right and now at this stage the green plate is floating the green plate is not connected with anybody else right the green plate is floating and the potential difference is applied for the red plate on the top okay and uh, you basically can figure out uh, for every such operation once you put a polarity in a certain plate you can figure out what is the l touch vertical or l touch horizontal right and this can quickly be done using a controller what a touch screen controller will do is uh, it is quickly uh, going to flip the voltages so whenever uh, there is a press right uh, it will scan right continuously the screen what portion of the touch uh, what portion of the screen has been touched and it is going to scan for the uh, uh, the offset in the horizontal direction as well as the vertical direction right and there is this uh, the adc is involved how much is the pressure at that particular point uh, right all these things are going to uh come up right i am going to share a small uh, white paper uh, that discusses a lot of the uh, technical concepts behind the touch screen controller right so reading that uh, you can get a far more uh, clear, uh, clear idea right but they are not going to go into the uh, nitty gritty details that i have already taught you right so once you are clear about the voltage divider circuit or the analysis of the basic circuit then you can look at the manual to understand it's not a manual it's a more of a white paper right they will have nice explanations about uh, how this uh, touch screen controllers are built right and this basically becomes your screen right so this has this identifiable points and every such point could be very clearly identified if you click on uh, let's say this is 0 0 right so this will be what uh, 0 comma 1 right uh, this is 2 comma 2 right this is uh, 1 comma 2 right so uh, from the horizontal circuit we are going to get the first first component that is x right so this green circuit is going to give us x and the red circuit is going to give us the value of y right and all we are getting is the value of voltage and that voltage will be converted into some discrete uh, pixel value right uh, in this very toy example we have uh, the pixels only only 3 cross 3 uh, pixels 
and uh, the other important thing is the timing right how fast because if you move your hand too fast or uh, there will be a certain uh, quantum of time that will be required for registering a touch right and particularly if we are also looking at uh, how hard a particular portion of the screen was pressed so th these sort of things uh, start uh, kind of mattering right you can you can you can take a look at how the timing is chosen what sort of adc is chosen right so in expensive uh, expensive this pen tablets right you will see that there are like uh, 8192 different levels of uh, pressure sensing mechanisms right if you put a small dot right so depending on what is the touch sensitivity uh, it can either be, be be a small dot or a very large dot like this right uh, so this is this is something uh, which is also there in such uh, systems right if the touch is uh, harder right it is going to uh, a, a, a large portion of the red plate is going to touch the uh, bottom plate right or the black plate whereas if the touch is very light uh, only a small portion is going to touch right so let's say this is the uh, this is the black plate right and, and this is the red plate so whenever you touch right if you if your touch is very uh, feeble okay so only something like this is going to happen right whereas if the touch itself is uh, very hard right if the pressure was very hard in that case it could be something like this okay so this is the top uh, red plate so based on that you can also figure out the pressure okay so i am not going to look at how the pressure is sensed in this particular class but uh, the white paper gives you a lot of uh, idea regarding that right and you can it's just a four or five page thing which you can like very nicely read okay so this is the expanded version where you have the series of uh, these resistances uh, which are already inherent uh, to the material of the touch screen uh, the two plates the top red plate and the bottom black plate and in between that you will have a partition uh, that that is the material of the screen the high resistance uh, the high resistance material and you will have the separate voltage buses right one for the x axis or the horizontal circuit and the other one for the uh, other one for the uh, y axis right and once the voltage measurement is done across these two axes uh, you can get the coordinate value x and y okay so in any questions with this or did you understand uh, or any comments anything you want to just share Okay, no comments. Okay. So with this, I'm just going to go over the simulation that I was asking you to do anyway uh, in the Tinkercad website. So you can simply, this is free uh, tool. You can just create an account and uh, go and uh, deploy some electronic circuit of your own uh, just to fiddle uh, with the values and you can do some uh, measurements there right it has a great collection of different uh, electronic components uh, including you can uh, deploy things like a microcontroller like Arduino and so on right so there's a 5 volt uh, connection and let us see the x axis voltage measurement so I simply <coughs> connected uh, the green circuit now right and as I, you will see that I will put uh, the probe at different points so let, let, let us uh, see that, okay, what happens here, right? So there is a 3.75 uh, volts, right? Uh, once we look at the voltage at this particular, so this is our virtual button, right? So at this particular point, uh, what is the value of the voltage? If we look at the x-axis, right? We are now analyzing only the x-axis or the green part. Right, so this could be mapped to uh, a value. It could be 0, 1, 2, depending on the convention, right? If, if this is uh, 0, so then we can say this is, this, is, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, and this is 4, right? So it depends on our convention. Okay, so this 3.75 volt can be mapped to a certain pixel value or a certain position of the screen. Okay, and now we are just going to show that voltage gradient, right? If we go to the other portion it will have the value 
stripped down by 1.25 volt and if we go to there uh, it will be one point two five and so on so after that it will be zero so what is interesting here is that uh, this particular experiment that uh, it will be independent of uh, which level you are in right when we are looking into the x axis wherever you are right whether you are pressing this whether you are pressing this button or this button or this button doesn't matter you will have the same value right because yeah uh, the y voltage measurements are not playing any role so in this case the circuit is uh, the top one the red one so we are now going to uh, connect the red circuit right which is going to be used for measuring the voltage in the horizontal uh, sorry in the vertical axis okay so here uh, it now the doesn't matter whether you are putting the probe uh, uh, here or here or here right so uh, as long as you are in the same uh, height your voltage will be the same so that's what i have tried to show you using the simulations so i would ask you to again do this thing on your own so you'll have much more clarity you can play with it a little bit more right so i'm just giving you some some example points trying to show you that the voltage across the horizontal uh, plane here will not change the voltage gradient is just going to exist in the vertical plane right so there is not much of a much of an advanced concept involved here but uh, it's basically forms the foundation of uh, resistive touch screens right and apart from that apart from this particular thing you also have the microcontroller based part which is going to schedule all the voltage measurements and find out the coordinate uh, x and y okay so uh, i do not uh, yeah have uh, more to this if you have uh, any more question regarding the uh, resistive touch screen please ask me and after that we are going to wrap up the class